state space is the set of all possible configurations. It's very important to notice that it's a curly bracket here, which means it's simply a set. So here's your first state, second state, third state, and so on. So it is simply the set of all possible configurations. Configurations also refers to states, so all possible states. Here's a state space for the eight puzzle game as well. Say for example, the game starts at a position like this, and then we can either move the blank space up or move five down. So if we move five down, we get this new state. If we move eight to the right, or um, move the blank space to the left, then we get to this state. So here's your first state, second state, third state, fourth state, and so on. So we end up with many possible states. Similarly, for the Romania problem, our state space may look something like this. Here's our initial state, where only we are at the city of Arad. After expanding Arad, that is after looking at all the possible states after Arad, we may go to Sibiu, we may go to Timisora and Jared. This is second state. Here's your first state, only Arad visited, second state. After expanding Sibiu, we will see that these are four possible states that we can go to. This is your third state and so on. Let's also discuss what exactly do we mean by searching for solution. So as we discussed earlier, solution is an action sequence. Search algorithms work by considering various actions here. The possible actions are going either doing this, this, here. It's either of these three and so on. So the possible action sequences starting at the initial state form something known as a search tree where the initial state of the tree is the root. It's like an inverted tree. The branches are actions and the nodes correspond to states in the state space of the problem. So this is your root node of the search tree. And then these are possible actions. And each outcome of action is another state. Let's say state two, state three, and so on. And this whole thing is known as the search tree. The essence of search, in other words, when we are saying we are searching for a solution, what we essentially mean is following up one option now and putting all others aside for later in case the first choice does not lead to a solution. So searching basically means make one choice now, leave the others for some time, and continue this until you don't find a solution. So the principle of search is this. That is, you take one action, leave others aside for a while, and then take another action, leave all others for aside for a while, and repeat this until you find a solution. This is what we exactly mean when we say we are searching for a solution. Let's take a look at an example. For the Romania problem, the root node of the tree corresponds to the initial state, that is in Arad. This is our initial state. The first step is to check whether this is a goal state or not. So when this when the agent is at Arad, we check is agent our is Arad our goal state? No. Then we need to consider taking various actions. So what are the possible actions here? The agent either can go to Sibiu, Timisora, or Zerind. We do this by expanding the current state. So we expand Arad and we'll, we look at all possible um, actions that we can take. That is, we apply each legal action to the current state, thereby gener generating new set of states. So the possible states that the agent can go to are these three now. So we add three branches from the parent node resulting into three child nodes. That's what we did here in Sibiu, in Timisora, in Jared. Now we must choose which of these three possibilities to consider further. So the agent has a choice of either going to these three cities. So the agent can either decide to take one path and leave others or 
Maybe take this path and leave others. Suppose we choose Sibiu first, that is the agent decides to go to this estate and uh, leave this. We check to see if this is a goal state or not. Is Sibiu our goal state? If it is not, then we expand it to get all other possible neighbors. So from Sibiu, you can see that we can either go back to Arad, go to O, F, or R. We consider all of this. And uh, now the possible actions we can take are either going back to Arad, Fergus, O, or R. We can then choose any of these four or go back and choose Timisora or Gerend. If you remember, we have left these out. So now we have a choice of either going to these four cities or these two cities that we had initially left. Each of these six is a leaf node. Right now, these cities one, two, three, four, five, six are leaf nodes. In other words, they are the nodes with no children in the tree. In our current tree, so this particular tree that we are currently at after expanding CBU, these six nodes, one, two, three, four, five, six, are leaf nodes. The set of all leaf nodes available for expansion at any given point is called the frontier. And um, the tree consists of those nodes with bold outlines right now. So these are the frontiers. So these six nodes, they are individually leaf nodes, but all put together into a single set form the frontier. So what is the difference between a leaf node and a frontier? A leaf node is a part of the frontier. A frontier is the set of all leaf nodes. Search algorithms require a data structure to keep track of the search tree that is being constructed. So if we have a tree, search tree like this, we need to keep track of the tree because um, eventually we will need to return the path from the tree. Here's a screenshot of a part of the tree. Say for example, here's your parent node, current node, next nodes, and so on. What we need to maintain at each node of a tree, each node N of a tree, is four things. We need to maintain the state of the state space. That is, for example, what in the current node of the tree, what is the state of the configuration of the problem? We also need to maintain what is the parent node that led to this node. So we also need to maintain um, a link to the parent node. We also need to maintain what action was applied to the parent node to generate this node. That is, um, from the parent node, what action was taken to get to this node. You can imagine that we need these because once, let's say, for example, in a search tree, we find a solution, right? then in order to return the solution, we need all of this. We will need, this is the solution, but how did you get here? We get got here from, let's say, this node to this node by taking action A1, from this node to this node by taking action A2, and from this node to this node by taking action A3. So at the end, we have to return the action sequence. So we will need to return all of these actions and the parent node. So for that reason, each node, at each node, we need to maintain the parent node and the action that was taken on the parent node to reach to this node. We also need to maintain path cost. And um, usually this is represented by GN or the path cost at this node. We need to maintain path cost because if there are multiple paths that lead to this goal state, then we should be able to compare the path cost of various paths and then choose the optimal path. So for each node in, in, and in the tree, we need to maintain these four things in order to keep track of the search tree and to be able to finally return a solution. Now here's something that's very confusing but important to keep in mind. That is the difference between nodes and states. 
A node is a bookkeeping data structure used to represent the search tree. So a node is a component of your search tree. That is, um, if this is your search tree, then one piece of the search tree is your node. A state corresponds to configuration of the real world. In other words, one node contains the state information. It also contains the parent information, that is what was the previous node. It also contains the action that was taken on the parent to get to this node. And it also contains the path cost. In other words, node is a data structure that is bigger than your state and we have a state contained in the node information and nodes are on a particular path as defined by the parent pointers whereas the states are not in other words multiple nodes could have same states let's say s1 and s1 because from various paths we may reach the same state so two nodes can contain the same world state if that state is generated by a Two different paths. More concretely, for solving problems in search, we use the queue data structure in the algorithms. And the operations on a queue data structure are as follows. We can either check whether a queue is empty or not. We can pop an item from a queue, removes the first element of the queue and returns it, or we can insert an element into the queue. Queues are characterized by the orders in which order in which they store the information, inserted nodes. The three common variants that are used are first in, first out, last in, first out, and the priority queue. In the first in, first out queue, whatever comes in the queue first, whatever is inserted in the queue first, is also the first one to leave. Last in, first out is whatever comes out the most recently into the queue comes out as the most recent item from the queue. And the priority queue pops out elements with highest priority. Here are three pictures that show the difference between the first in first out queue, the last in first out queue, and the priority queue. In a priority queue, say for example, when people are standing in line at the emergency room, hospital emergency room, Every patient may have a severity associated with the patient so that they can be processed based on the severity. Say there are three people already in line which have various severities, let's say five, three, two. Say there is another person that comes in last into the queue but with a very high severity, 10. That means the next person to be processed from the queue will immediately be this. In other words, every item in the queue will have a priority score associated with the item and then the elements in the queue are processed based on the priority. This shows the first in first out queue where the first element in line is served first. And this shows the last in first out queue because in order to remove items from this queue, the last item that was added maybe was this table but when we remove it, the table should be the first item that we remove. Now, how can we evaluate the performance of a problem-solving algorithm? Say, for example, we have a problem A, and we also have an algorithm X that can solve this problem. Maybe we have multiple algorithms, X1, X2, X3, and so on. How do we check the performance of these algorithms so that we know which algorithm to pick from? We use four metrics or four ways to evaluate the performance of an algorithm. The first thing we check is completeness. Is the algorithm guaranteed to find a solution when there is one? If we know that there is a solution, can the algorithm find it? The next thing we check is optimality. Does the strategy find optimal solution? The algorithm may return a solution, but the, does the algorithm return the best possible solution. Does all of them return the shortest path? The next is time complexity. How long does it take for the algorithm to find a solution? In other words, which is faster? Is it faster than other algorithms or not? 
The next is space complexity. How much memory does it occupy to perform the search? For a space and time complexity, S and T complexity, that is how much time it takes and how much memory it occupies, the typical measure is the size of the state space graph. We represent this by using this symbol V and E. That is, here V corresponds to a set of vertices or the number of nodes that we have in this graph. Here the number of nodes are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and so on. And E is the set of edges, that is how many connections do we have between these, um, these nodes. So for the space and time complexity, we measure the space and time using V and E. In other words, the time complexity may be compared to the number of vertices we have and the number of edges we have, how much time does it need? Is it 2 times V? Is it V square? Is it 2 times E? Or is it E times E? And so on.